you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a van, to travel across the country and explore new places like waterfalls and canyons, to drive on the open road and not know where you'll go next? Have you ever heard the wolf cry to a blue corn moon? These are some of the questions I've been asking myself for years now, and this is the story of how I got my van. I've always been drawn to a more minimalistic kind of lifestyle, not owning a lot of things and minimizing the space I take up on this planet. This idea may or may not have started when I watched that documentary called Minimalism on Netflix. You know the one I'm talking about? It's pretty good. It kind of taught me that you don't need a lot of things to be happy. When I moved to New York City in 2018, my life was filled with more noise, more people, more things, and no nature. It was getting pretty exhausting and after living there for nearly three years I really just needed to get out but I didn't really know what I should do next. I always had this idea of living in a tiny home but I had no idea how to start this kind of lifestyle. I had no idea how to build a home or how much money it would cost. It all seemed pretty impossible for me but after having a pretty good conversation with my neighbor Adam on the rooftop of our apartment building he convinced me that I should do it and so began my journey to van life. I've spent the last year or so researching aka binge watching van life YouTube videos and the first thing that I needed to do was figure out which van I needed to get. I needed something that fit my budget, had decent gas mileage, and was still big enough to accommodate everything that I would need like a kitchen and a bed and all that kind of stuff. I looked around at a bunch of different vans like the Ram Pro Masters, the Mercedes Sprinters, but they were just like way too expensive for me. I would have loved to have one of those 80s Volkswagen vans because I just love the look of these. I mean, just look at these things, aren't they sick? But I needed something more modern, and I ended up settling on the Ford Transit Connect XLT, which is a pretty small van, but it does fit my budget, has good gas mileage, and it is big enough for everything that I would want to put in it. But first, I needed the money. I spent the last months working a lot doing video editing jobs, as well as grocery delivery jobs. I canceled any subscriptions that I didn't need and minimized my spending as much as I possibly could. I was also staying Staying with family rent free so I was able to save all that money which was honestly the biggest help. When I finally felt like I had enough money saved up where I could get the van, I would scan Facebook marketplace every few days and just see what was available. This one had too many miles, this one had too much rust, this one was too expensive, and then there it was. The perfect van. I messaged this guy named Ron six hours after the listing was posted. Is this still available? Yes, it's still available. Ron called me the day after Christmas, and I was honestly a little bit sketched out just because he said the van would cost $900 more than what the ad said, and I was kind of just like, why? And he also asked for my ID, my insurance, and my credit card information over the phone. So I was kind of just getting red flags, like, I don't know what's going on here. So I just told him I'd call him back. I was really nervous because you always hear about scams online, and I thought you were never supposed to like give your credit card information over the phone but at some point I realized Ron was with a dealership and I called my sister and brother-in-law and I also did a little bit of research and apparently it's pretty normal for dealerships to ask for these things. We decided that nothing fishy is going on here and it's all good but you could understand like my concern right with giving your credit card information and all your personal info over the phone. I don't know, it just feels weird to me. Am I, am I the only one? So I called Ron back and gave him my information over the phone. I put down a $1,000 deposit and he said he would call me back soon. Just checked my bank statement, looks like the $1,000 deposit went through, so that's a good sign. He just sent me the receipt for the deposit, so that's another good sign. Still waiting for him to call me back. When he called me back, he offered one of his drivers to come pick me up at my house the following day to come look at the van. He's just wanna get, hey, we'll, um, we'll have to pick, pick you up, and we'd like to have either um, you know, cash or a certified check for the rest. Um... I thought this was really weird, having a random stranger come pick you up. I didn't know this was a thing that, that dealerships do, so I, I told him I'd call him back. 
again. Talked to my family again, and we agreed that nothing fishy is going on here. I really just needed some reassurance, okay? <laughs> so I messaged Ron and told him, have the driver come pick me up. You know, I'm taking this risk. I don't know what I'm getting into, but the next day I went to go get a massive check of $8,745 at the bank. I don't think I've ever spent that much money in my life before. I was just kind of concerned, like I had this random stranger coming to pick me up and I had a check of $8,745 on me. Mm. So I took the risk anyway, and this man named Mark came and picked me up, and we drove an hour and a half together, and we talked about hiking and cars. It was kind of hilarious, but it ended up not being fishy or a scam or anything like that, but you could totally understand my concerns, right? First, giving my information over the phone. I didn't know this guy or anything. I didn't even know it was a dealer at first. And then second, having all this money on me and having a random stranger coming to pick me up. But we arrived at the dealer, the van was sitting right out in front, looked amazing. Went into the dealership, met with Ron, signed some papers, and then took it for a test drive. And I loved it. I gave him the check and he handed me the keys and the van was mine. Yo, you guys, I literally just bought my van driving off the uh, dealership right now. I'm so excited, like, oh, this thing is so cool. <laughs> I drove the car back to my sister and brother-in-law's house in Wisconsin where I'll be working on converting it and I'm so stoked to start. I mean, look at this thing. It's gonna be my home. I'm gonna pour my heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. Feels good to finally have it. I just wanna look at it. Just look at it. Just look at that. If you're looking to get a van too, remember it may take some time, dedication, hard work, and patience, of course. But you got this. And if I can do it, you can do it too. It really helps just to take things one step at a time rather than thinking about all of the things that you have to do at once because then it just becomes mentally exhausting. When I first started this whole idea of doing van life stuff, it all felt so overwhelming to me, but just take things one at a time and it'll go a lot smoother. That's my experience at least. So in short, look for the right van that fits your needs. If you want a big van, a small van, a vintage van, whatever it is, consider what kind of stuff you want to put in there. Like you want a big bed or a big kitchen, maybe a smaller van isn't right for you. You could also fit some of those things in the smaller van, but it might not be as comfortable. Find something that fits your budget. Include both the van and the van build. Mine was around $15,000 for the whole thing, the van and the build. So save as much money as you can and also just be aware of any scams or anything like that when you're buying your van. This is the start to my van build series and I will be documenting the whole thing from start to finish. So if you want to see those videos, then you're going to want to subscribe to the channel. Other than that, I got nothing else. Thanks for watching. Bye.